when I answered the phone, they were like, you apply for the job. And I'm like, I did. I did. Well, let's see where this goes. But I had no, I had no nothing about policing. Nothing. Except when I got arrested when I was eight. Fast forward to the end of my college career, the football thing. She was pregnant and she was getting ready to have our son, or she was close to having our son at the time. Then I had to make a decision, put the X on the counter for football and go to something else because I need something more sustainable. I applied for everything in the city of Tucson. I had a degree. I got, I got hundreds of no's. One day they called me and uh, it was after an argument that me and her had, obviously. <laughs> so we, we had just argued briefly on the phone about the engagement ring or something like that. It, nothing major. And, and I tell this story because it's always funny to me how this happened. Uh, we had a little argument the night before, wake up the next morning and I get a phone call from the Tucson Police Department. And initially I thought she had called the police on me, like she was mad at me. I'm like, why would she call the police on me on a, on a basic argument like this? She want me to go to jail. But when I answered the phone, they were like, you apply for the job. And I'm like, I did, I did. Well, let's see where this goes. But I had no, I didn't know nothing about policing, nothing. Except when I got arrested when I was eight. And the, and the agenda that you feel, you know, growing up in the black community, feeling like the cops always have to get you. And uh, I did a ride along, man, and it, it changed my life. Officer Sean Payne changed my life during that ride along, and that, that kind of set my career up. So you become a police officer. Mm -hmm. This is sort of a 180, as you just said, oh, yeah. from, from where you started. Right. Um, what was the most eye-opening thing about being an officer? It was the idea that I had no idea what police did, and I thought I did, right? Watching cops, listening to people online. I realized that people that have never put on the badge and actually served as a police officer, they have very limited understanding of policing, period. I mean, I mean limited to like 10% of an understanding, mm -hmm. even less than that. If you know somebody that's a police, you may have a little more, but I had no idea. Completely a different world. It's completely a different job than people know about. Um, emotionally, legally, you know, the training, I mean, all of that is, is completely different. And, and if I got a taste of that, even after all the training, my first arrest was where I was like, this is real, man, this is real. I really have the power to take somebody's freedom away. And this is not a role player, what we call him in the academy, where somebody's faking to be a criminal. This is right. a real person with real emotions, a real life, and they can really kill you too. And that was a, that was a, a pivotal point and an eye-opening point for me. What was it like? Did you ever go back to the old community and the guys that were giving you the weed as an eight-year-old? Oh, no, no. You, saw you're in your uniform? No, growing up in Fort Worth, oh, I became a right, police you officer you in Tucson. Weren't, right, you weren't wearing But right. there was there was remnants of that, right? You had a black community in Tucson, and you arrested people that looked like people that you grew up with, act like people you grew up with, like my cousins and grandma, you know? And so dealing with that kind of give you a little, you know, flashbacks of, of what went on and I got to see it from both sides. All of that horrible stuff I thought they did to us when we were in a vacant house, how they treated us and all that stuff, I realized that them officers was right. They did what they supposed to do. Getting a call of that nature, not knowing who to expect, knowing that we die on a day-to-day -day basis from calls simply like that. And um, that really, you know, made me, made, really, really open my understanding to it. Yeah. What about racism within yeah. the police department, right? Yeah. If you listen to half the media, you know, police departments, they're all racist. They're, yeah. they're looking for racist ways to incarcerate people. Yeah, it's the biggest load of crap I ever heard in my life. The biggest load of crap. Police, if people understood what policing was, you, under, you would understand that it's rare for a police officer to be actually a racist. Now, are there racist people on the police department? Yes. There's racist pastors. There's ra I mean, come on. We all know. We all know that every walk of life, there's some idiot out there that's still lingering to hateful rhetoric. Yeah. But Doesn't it drive you crazy that you have to qualify it always with that? It, it drives yeah. me crazy all the time. Yes, there yeah. are homophobes. There are yeah. racists. Yeah. <laughs> there are bad, mean people. Yeah. We cannot exterminate all of them. Right. Thanos could do it, but yeah. <laughs> basically we can't, you know? We can't, but some people need to know that because yeah. watching the media every day, if you're not an informed person or you don't, you're not a person that's a leader and you can lead with your own thoughts, you're a follower, you'll fall into that stuff. But it's very difficult to be a racist on a police department. And, and the, one of the biggest reasons why is because you can't, you can't pick who you serve. And, and the, the least racist people, in my opinion, are the white police officers that work in a black community. Because you put your life on the line every day for black folks. You are willing to die for black folks. You have to visually see and feel the pain and hurt in the community when brothers getting shot every day. 
People don't realize that police are the ones got to put those young brothers in body bags. I don't care who you are. When you see a young man with his brains hanging out, clinging for life, maybe even pleading for his life, gurgling in blood, the age of your son, the age of your nephew, cousin, somebody that looks like your mom, your grandmother, a young baby that's been shot through the head from a drive-by, I don't care what race you are, man. It, it messes with you. And, and for people to think that these white officers are these cruel, evil people that don't have any sense of uh, emotions or attachment to human life, these people are, 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 the people that are pushing this rhetoric are evil and liars. You put these young people in body bags every day. You go to their mom, grandmother, and you look that lady in the face, trying to hold back your own tears because you could only imagine losing your son. Some of these women have lost all of their children to gang violence. And you got to look her in the eye and you got to be strong for her and everybody else and say, I'm sorry, but he's never coming back. And that that's what people don't understand happens. And I also believe that it's racist, in my opinion, to make the projection that white officers are targeting black people in the community. And, and one, of the, one of the main reasons is that you would have to assume that all black people are bad. Think about this for a minute. If officers are afraid of black people, that means that all of them are doing something that will lead officers to be afraid of them. That's not true. Yeah. It's only a few dummies that are destroying the community. What about grandma now who've been robbed? They call the police for help. Some women have been raped. They call the police for help. Officers are seeing another side of black people that they don't want to tell you about but they project it so people can be divided. And I think that's the biggest thing that, that bothers me about it. So since you were probably uniquely positioned in Arizona as an officer to go to some of these communities and talk to some of these people, do you think you were able to, to wake up some young kids that were yeah. up to no good in, in a way yeah. that maybe a white officer just wouldn't have been able to, as yeah. well-intentioned as he might be? I think young people and black people in general. You know, I was considered the black person whisperer, right? I'm, I'm some serious. Like we would go on calls and black people would be like, oh, man, F that. You know what? I don't want to talk. Man, what, what a black officer. Said. Man, come on, brother. Tell you know, tell them that I, they go to jail just like they would with the white officer. But somehow they felt compassion because they felt they can identify with me. And a lot of times they would listen to me, articulate to them, brother, it ain't what you think it is. They didn't pull you over because you because you black. You think they care about your color, your skin? They, you got pulled over because you had a suspended driver's license or your suspended registration. Stop jumping to that conclusion because you are creating a scenario of frustration and, and conflict that doesn't need to be had. An officer just comes over to you doing a routine, what we call routine traffic stop, and now you, you hype. Oh, you put me on because I'm black. This is what that means to an officer when you say that, is that I'm a racist, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I don't have any integrity at all. Yeah. And I didn't waste it all these years Develop and building what I've established and you're telling me that I'm willing to throw that away and I have no integrity I don't care about my family. I don't care about my pension or nothing because I want to racially profile you as If I'm that shallow-minded well, you better believe you probably about to get a ticket, you know, and I think people don't understand it. they start the The conversation off very wrong when they do that a lot of officers let it go yeah. But some officers that you catch on camera sometimes they don't take it lightly did you also get the reverse of that, though, where you'd go into these communities and then they'd see you and be like, well, this guy's the sellout. Yeah. Why, why would we talk to him? Sometimes, sometimes it would happen. More often than not, they felt that they can identify with me. One reason why I think God kind of put an anointing on me that allowed me to reach people uniquely, um, black, white, or, in, you know, or whatever. The fact that I didn't curse on the job helped me reach people uniquely. Because when the stuff is hitting the fan, the only person that sounds is if he got, has integrity or not just integrity, but sounds like he's calm. Just because I'm not yelling uh, uh, curse words, people attract to me. I feel like God gave me a gift to communicate as well. So I was able to communicate with people and, and you know, people talk people out of suicide and all kinds of stuff. What do you make of just sort of how the media treats all of the shootings and that, you know, certain shootings, yeah. if it's a white cop and a black uh, suspect, then we treat it a certain way. If it's a black yeah. cop and a white one, we treat it differently. A lot of times the same people who are outraged over it one way, then the next day it happens the other way, then they ignore the story. Yeah. The way yeah. we're, everyone's playing this really twisted game right. with policing right now. There's money in black people's emotions, right? We're probably the most emotional people, a group of people, if you want a group, um, in the country. More, twice as many white people have been shot this year unarmed than black people. 
in America. Almost every year, the case is that more white people get shot unarmed than black people. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about politics instead of nonstop yelling, check out our politics playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, watch our full episode playlist all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.